Hello and welcome to Clinical Exam Series with Dr. Piro. Today we are going to be discussing clacking of abdominal pain. As in all pain, we use Socrates to clack abdominal pain. Socrates here will stand for the site, onset, character, radiation, association, the timing of that pain, exacerbation and release factors, and the severity of the pain. Of course, as in if you are in an exam situation, you use close-ended questions to your patient to be able to manage the time. So you ask questions like, do you have abdominal pain? Which is a close-ended question, rather than tell me about your pain, which is an open-ended question. Um, lastly, use late terms so that your patient can be able to relate to the questions you are asking, not technical terms. These are the questions you ask if your patient has abdominal pain. Following Socrates. Now, the site, where is the pain? If the pain is in the right, for example, hypochondriac joint, you point towards maybe a hepatic cause or a biliary cause, for example, cholecystitis. If the pain is in the right iliac fossa, you point towards more of an appendicitis or an acicapo tumor. Was it insidious in onset, likely from an inflammatory cause, or sudden in onset, likely from a mechanical obstruction? Right. Now, for the character of the pain, is the pain constant, always there? As seen in large bowel um, obstruction. Is the pain burning and gnawing as seen in pectic ulcer? Is the pain colicky, waxes and wane as seen in intestinal obstruction or ure ureteric colics from ure ureteric stones? So the character of the pain can give you an idea of where the pain is. Ah, radiation. Now for radiation. Pain from the right hypochondriac region that radiates to the shoulder will point more towards cholecystitis. Pain that originates from the umbilicus that radiates towards the right iliac fossa will point towards appendicitis. Pain from the loin, from the flanks, that radiates towards the groin will point towards what? The renal stones. Renal stones. Pain that radiates to the back will point towards peptic ulcer disease and pancreatitis. So the radiation will give you a clue as to where the pain is from. Now, I should also tell you that RA association, and here you have to take your time and rule out the possible associations with that pain. If the abdominal pain comes with vomiting and diarrhea, it points towards gastro, gastroenteritis as a possible cause of that um, abdominal pain. If there is bleeding, hematemesis, it's likely from an upper gastrointestinal pathology. If there's melina stool, that colored stool, that means passing of denatured um, stool, blood in stool, it points towards a lower GI cause of that particular abdominal pain. Now, also, you want to ask for female patients, you want to ask if the patient is menstruating, as dysmenorrhea can be a cause of abdominal pain. You want to ask if the patient has multiple sexual partners and unprotected sexual intercourse. This will give, this will um, point you towards, with vaginal discharge, will point you towards um, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. If the pain is comes recurrently, monthly, in cyclic pattern, it might point you towards endometriosis as a possible cause. If there's history of amenorrhea, it's important to rule out an ectopic pregnancy in that female. Now, if there is alternating diarrhea with constipation, you should rule out the possible cause. A possible cause being, you know, um, a colonic tumor as a possible cause of that abdominal pain. As part of the associations, also we want to know the genotype of the patient. Patients with vasoocclusive crisis, sickle cell patients with yellow discoloration of the eye, um, um, recurrent bone pains can have an um, a vascular occlusive crisis with visceral crisis. So that is also a possible cause. So you need to know the genotype of the patient. Now, you want to know um, the um, food hygiene of the particular patient. If the patient patronizes food vendors and uh, the food hygiene, this can point because enteric fever is also a cause of abdominal pain. Now, let's move on to T in Socrates. The timing of the pain. Peptic ulcer um, pain is worse at night. So it's important to just uh, know that. Now, exacerbating and relieving factors. If, if the pain is relieved by sitting upright and upwards, it's, it points towards more of pancreatitis. If the pain is relieved by antacids, uh, it points towards more of peptic ulcer disease. Now, the severity. Does this pain um, stop the patient from carrying out 
physical activities? Does it, is this worse enough to prevent patients from sleeping? And lastly, you can use the pain scale from zero being no pain to 10 being the worst pain the patient has ever experienced to, to engrave the severity of the pain. So this is how we clap abdominal pain when we have, um, when we have, if you use Socrates to clap abdominal pain, it is easy to transpose it using the five C's in your history of presenting complaint, which would be the complaint, the cause, the course, the complications, and the care given so far. So thank you for watching. There'll be other videos on clacking um, examinations and other procedures and how to integrate your clinical knowledge with your academic knowledge. Thank you very much for watching. Like, 